What's up everyone? Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. Today I have Dr. Wilson who is a MD, PhD. She's going to tell us why she took that route as well as some uh, tips for everyone else out there. Dr. Walking, Dr. Wilson, uh, how are you doing today? I'm good, thanks Dr. Webb. How are you? I'm doing great. Um, go ahead and uh, introduce yourself uh, uh, and tell us uh, who you are. Yeah, so my name is Tanisha Wilson. Um, I have my PhD. I got my PhD from University of Florida in 2014. Um, and now I'm pursuing the MD. Um, but I am a part of UF's MD PhD program. Um, the way that I got in is a little bit different than uh, the typical MD PhD student. So I was pursuing my PhD in immunology, um, and then I applied to a program um, called the Clinical Translational Science Institute's Predoctoral mm -hmm. Program. Um, and in the application process, um, the director of that program was also the director of the MD PhD program. Mm -hmm. And he offered me the opportunity to apply to the MD PhD program um, while I was applying to that program. And so that's kind of how um, I was accepted. Gotcha. Have you always been interested in research, or um, is that something you kind of fell into? So I get that question often. Um, so yes, actually. So when I was in elementary and middle school, I didn't go to the best schools. Um, mm -hmm. and they didn't have the best science programs. Um, and I remember feeling like I needed that. Um, and I was actually uh, recruited to a, a program in high school that allowed me to get my associate's degree uh, before I graduated high school. And mm -hmm. I was introduced to science that way. Um, so when I went to uh, undergrad at UF, I decided that I wanted to pursue research. Um, gotcha. and that's why I decided to, I asked one of my microbiology professors um, and she directed me to a lab and that's how I got involved. And that's how I learned about the MDPHD program actually. Gotcha. And can you talk a little bit about the uh, process of applying to the uh, program? Do you have to have a lot of research already going into it? And uh, do you have to have an MD acceptance prior? Or can you talk about the application process? Right. So for me, um, it was a little bit different. But the typical MD PhD program, uh, it is recommended that you do have um, a significant research project um, from undergrad mm. where you can, you at least um, have written a thesis um, yeah. about the project. Um, and you can get letters of recommendation from your PI. Uh, your principal investigator, yeah. um, the person that you work for in the lab, um, so that the idea is not so much that um, you know how to do research, because you're going to learn that, yeah. Yeah. It's just knowing that you have a significant interest enough, because it's a lot of work, gotcha. um, so I'm sure that is, that's what's, what goes through the minds of these program directors when they're, they're interviewing applicants. Okay. And I know your situation is a little bit different. It's, is it more common to do the uh, both concurrently or I know you finished your PhD first and then MD. Is it more common to do both at the same time? Yes. So okay. the more common way is uh, to apply to medical school and the PhD at the same time. Okay. And uh, so at the University of Florida, um, in order for you to get accepted to the MD PhD program, you have to first be accepted to the medical school. Gotcha. So you are applying to both programs, and when you interview uh, for the MD PhD program, you interview with the MD, um, mm -hmm. the medical school, and then you also interview with the, the graduate school as well. Gotcha. Okay. Can you talk about your uh, process of getting your PhD and kind of what a typical day for you was? And how long did it take? So it took me four and a half years. Um, okay. And really, it is dependent on. Um, the project and the subject matter. Okay. So I, I, I did immunology. Um, I worked in a cell biology lab, uh, T cell biology. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of my day was spent in the lab. Um, normally on a typical day, we'd probably have lab meeting around eight o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. start off the day. Um, that would probably last, last about an hour. Um, and then um, I'd go into the lab and work on the experiments, either planning experiments or experiments that I had planned that I was then going to carry out that day. Um, and then we also had uh, lectures. So mm -hmm. 
especially in the first couple of years of your of, of my training at least um the way that my pro my program was um organized we had to take classes and uh receive credit for um certain courses gotcha. um so when i when i was taking those courses that was a part of my day as well so i would have gotcha. to do a lecture and then come home and study and we had exams and yeah. presentations and um things of that sort gotcha. I think one of the things that's um a little bit different uh between medical school and graduate school is medical school is is very very structured mm -hmm. where you know um exactly what you're going to be doing at nine o'clock in the morning and yeah you know what I mean? Yeah. Graduate school, you kind of make your own schedule. Um, and then um, something that's also different is that you have a committee of, of, of researchers that contribute to your project. So mm -hmm. one of the, mo one of the um, more nerve wracking things in graduate school is having your committee meeting. So you go and you explain to your committee how your meeting, how your project is going and you give them a, a formal presentation and then they give you feedback. Um, and those are you inter you have those at different intervals in your graduate school. Gotcha, gotcha. And and speak, speaking of the uh, financial incentives to do that long process, you mentioned it's eight years. Do they offer any tuition assistance to your medical school? So yes. So one of the incentives for sure um, is when you get accepted to the MD PhD program, they not only pay your tuition, uh -huh. um, but you also get a stipend. Wow. So. Um, it's, it's definitely, it definitely helps um, yeah. knowing that when you graduate, you don't have a significant amount of debt to pay back. And then also you can be saving money because yeah. you have been while you're in school. So that's basically another option to pay, have, have medical school pay for. I was listening to Dave Ramsey earlier and he kind of mentioned to one of the callers, that's one of the routes that you should take. A lot of people mention military or. Uh, getting scholarships or taking out loans. Uh, I did, I've never thought of that. That's actually a great option to get your medical school paid for. It definitely is. Definitely. Yeah. And after you got your PhD, Danny, you started medical school. Uh, how was that transition? And um, was it kind of weird to, did people call you doctor at that point, your classmates? So those that knew, uh, they tried to call me doctor. Okay. <laughs> and I insisted that they just call me teacher. Gotcha. <laughs> but some of them still call me doctor. Um, and the transition was a little, it was a little challenging because um, it's, it's just, it really is completely different. Yeah. So it, like I said, in graduate school, you make your own schedule um, and you're working with whoever's in the lab. So I worked in a pretty small lab. We had about six people mm -hmm. in the lab. Whereas, you know, in medical school, I'm in a class of 130. Yeah, um, so that was different, um, but it was a welcome to change. I loved the structure of medical school, and uh, one of the things that I always laugh about is um, on day one, they uh -huh. I'd be graduating May nineteenth, twenty eighteen, and that was yeah. twenty fourteen, and I was like, yes, nice. In graduate school, you don't know. Yeah, so based on your committee. Gotcha. And you are in your fourth year, your last year of medical school, and you're applying to OBGYN. Yes. Uh, can you tell us uh, why OB, uh, GYN, and um, if you have any, maybe some tips for people that are kind of upcoming in the application cycle? For sure. So OB, for me, um, was the perfect balance between medical management and surgical management. I knew that I, I love the cerebral aspect of, of medicine, mm -hmm. um, but I also like the technical aspect of surgery. Uh, so I decided on OB, GYN. It was, it was actually... Um, something that kind of snuck up on me. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't anticipate wanting to do OBGYN. Actually, since my research was in um, immunology, I thought I would do rheumatology. Mm -hmm. But I didn't realize that rheumatology was actually preparing me for, for, for OBGYN because a lot of the um, patients that have uh, rheumatic diseases um, are female. Mm -hmm. Because, um, for example, lupus, the, the disease that I studied, if 10 people have lupus, nine of them are female. Wow. And so the patient population that I studied um, in graduate school was young women yeah. of reproductive age, um, and I really enjoy that patient population. And so when I was introduced to it again in OB-GYN, and then having uh, the, the broad spectrum of 
you know, disease pathology and then also being able to, you know, know that I can do surgery and yeah. do medicine. That was perfect for me. Gotcha. Any interesting uh, interview stories that you use that? <laughs> I know on the surgery trial, almost every interview, they, there's something crazy that happens. <laughs> Let's see. Interesting interview story. I can't think of it. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it was a great experience. Yeah. Um, the, the thing that I liked about the interview trail for me was being able to, I, it, was, it forced me to have to think and um, do a lot of introspection huh. about what I wanted out of my career yeah. um, in order to articulate that well. So I felt like within those two to three months, I grew exponentially, just individually, um, being able to articulate what I want to do in gotcha. my career. So once you graduate in May, you'll become a physician scientist. Is that is, is that term that you guys use? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Okay. And do most people go into a, I would, I would assume, an academic position? And then so you'll be, you'll do a part-time, I don't know, maybe 70% as an OBGYN and 30% research. Is that kind of? So that is an option for sure, um, depending on what particular research that you want to do. So. If you want to do more basic science research, it's absolutely a requirement, I would say, to have some protected time for research outside of your clinical responsibility. Mm -hmm. um, but if you were to do more clinical research, since your clinical research is in relation to your patients, I don't know if you have to have 70-30 or the 50-50. Gotcha. Um, and so what I want to do is more clinical translational research um, rather than basic science research. I definitely want to do academic medicine um, and then also medical education. Uh, so I will, I will pursue a career. Um, gotcha. So to become an MD, PhD, it requires four years of college and then anywhere between, I don't know, seven to eight years of a combined program to get your MD, PhD. And then you have to do four years of uh, residency. Is that correct? Okay. Yes. yes. Gotcha. Um, and I understand that you will be the first African-American female to graduate from your program. That's right. That's amazing. Can you speak a little bit about that? How does that make you feel? You know, uh, it, it really is amazing to think um, that I would be the first anything. Yeah. You know, um, but I, I feel honored uh, to, to be able to say that. Um, and I think it's just a major, major blessing. Gotcha. And you're originally from Jamaica, or your parents are from Jamaica? My parents are Jamaican. I'm okay. from Florida, um, but I definitely represent the Jamaican. Um, okay. Yeah, uh, gotcha. I love Jamaica. I, actually, I, I met uh, several uh, people from Jamaica recently on the interview trail. It's oh, yeah. been uh, yeah, quite interesting and just to meet different types of people. Right. But, yeah, uh, that's one of the things I loved about the interview trail, too, just meeting everybody and um, yeah. getting perspectives, for sure. Gotcha. Uh, what other advice would you have for um, people who are interested in a field of uh, surgery or OB or uh, to get their MD, PhD? What kind of advice would you give them? Uh, specifically for the MD, PhD, um, it's a long time. You know, yeah. You the question all the time, Tanisha, how are you able, like, how are you able to, to be in training for so long? Uh, for me, my answer is I feel like this is what I've been called to do. Um, mm -hmm. And it's something that is a big undertaking. And so I would say, if you really love it, if you love research, if you know that this is what you wanna do, if you love medicine, go for it. Don't let anything stop you um, because it really is worth it. And I think that is becoming more and more clear to me now, especially having gone through the interview season and, and seeing how much worth the PhD has. You know, it's yeah. something that's very uh, sought after. Yeah. Um, programs really are interested in um, students who um, have this intellectual curiosity, um, especially enough to go and pursue the, the PhD. Um, and then carrying forward, it, it, it definitely helps you um, clinically as well, because it has, it help, has helped me uh, think critically. Um, and I would say it's definitely worth it. All right, Dr. Wilson, I'd like to thank you for coming on uh, today. Congrats on all your success, uh, especially setting that uh, bar, being the uh, first African-American female to graduate from your program. 
uh, you know, I wish you the best in uh, your upcoming residency. Thank you. Thank you. If students want to contact you, uh, how can they get a hold of you? Well, they can um, find me on Instagram at Dr. Nisha's Niche. Mm -hmm. um, and then also my Facebook is Tanisha Wilson. They can just send me a, face, a friend request. And then also my email address um, is tdw06 at ufl.edu. Okay, and I'll put links to all of those in the uh, descriptions. All right. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. We'll see you next time.